Managing Director of Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner, joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. All right, so listen, we uh, we met with Tony. First. Started having Tony on, I don't know, got to be six months ago, more, more than that now. And uh, kind of stuck and we like what he's got to uh, offer, what he says. It doesn't always have to be about money. In fact, a lot of times it's not. It's about things that are going on that he doesn't like, things that don't smell right here in the state of Connecticut. And uh, we bring on Tony D every Tuesday. Tony, how are you, buddy? I am fine and proud to be among you guys. Well, so more stuff with the state of Connecticut. Let's. I'll tee it up and let you go ahead and run with it. What's, well, what's happened? It this way. I mean, uh, I, I like to say I'm the guy here watching the green, and you have honored me to do that. I like to call this little segment the poker game. You know, Bob Blazeri and I used to have a lot of ball players on, the older players, and uh, they would talk about two games. There was a game that was being played on the field, and what they called the real game, which was the game of hearts or rummy or something that the players would all play for money in the clubhouse. And, uh, you know, if you had one good money game going on, you were happy. Well, we've got a couple of money games going on here. Now, again, you know, to keep this to the green, last week we spoke about Boston Consulting and, you know, the, the states and uh, how, how that all gets run. But um, we have been told by our governor that we are in a period of shared sacrifice. We're all in this together. Uh, you know, there is a front line. We have all the war analogies and things like that. But um, his chief lieutenant, Indra Nui, uh, who has made a passion, if you will, of being uh, the missionary for Connecticut, she's used those words. Uh, you can look at a, a, a current article in February of 2019. October 19th, she told the Singapore Times that she's a resident of Greenwich. She's committed. She's devoted. After all, we're all in this together. It's shared sacrifice. Uh, one day, I, my suspicious cap kicked on, and I'm thinking, hey, look, she retired from Pepsi-Cola in 2018, and these people, because of our lovely tax system, do not stick around. What's making her stick around? Why is she so devoted? I mean, is there something here I'm missing? I always try to go 360 on things. I'm not perfect. But anyway, as we looked at it, and as we looked at it a little bit more, Indra ain't really any more uh, different than the rest of them. She and her husband, Raj, started in 2016 with the construction of a magnificent, a magnificent 6,000-square-foot condominium in Coconut Grove, Florida, the place to be in Miami Beach. And there's a reason why it's Florida for these people. Truth be told, you know, I advise clients. And there's the rules about 183 days in the state, 183 days out of the state, and then something bigger called domicile. Where's your heart? Where's your mind? You know, uh, where do you vote? Uh, where do you worship? What kind of clubs you belong to? Uh, and it's very, very clear to me that uh, Indra is looking, she probably is there right now, or it's a process. Her husband, Raj, filed what was known as a certificate of domicile right, right in, the, in, in the city records in Florida, Dade County, saying, I am a Florida resident. <clears throat> So we have the poster child of, quote, unquote, shared sacrifice, and we're all in this together, who pretty much is the equivalent, you know, or, or she, the missionary for Connecticut. She might as well be Elmer Gantry, for crying out loud. <laughs> you, you know, it's like uh, we're being told that these are the people who were really in this thing with us. They ain't even here. She's on a call with all these people. We don't know where she's calling in from. That brings us to another thing. I'm sure you got a ton of questions. Well, I want to start with uh, just a basic question. Who checks on this time spent? I mean, I could say I live in Florida. That way I get all the perks. I could have a house down there, a residence down there. But, you know, so is somebody marking the days off my calendar that I'm here? I know that's a very general question, but I've always been curious about that. Do you have an answer for that? Well, put it this way. It, it is something you're supposed to self-certify. <laughs> Indra's, you know, shall we say, Indra's issue here is she's leading with her chin. She's 
she's saying she's in one place and she really is intended to be in another. Right. I mean, if, if Andrew were my client, I mean, I, 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 I would tie her to a wall. I'd say, don't you dare do something like this. I mean, I think where I am troubled as a citizen is that um, we have an unelected person who is doing this who really is, you know, she's going over the wall after the war. This is the equivalent of Dwight Eisenhower going to a, you know, resort in Sapporo in 1946. Right. I mean, come on, no, people. I totally get it. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, the old uh, do what I say, not what I do kind of scenario for sure, where they're reaping the benefits of where they live. I'm just curious about the mechanics of it because you're a money guy. If I was a, a wealthy person and I made, if I made a half a million bucks a year, Rather than pay state income tax in Connecticut, I just go buy a house, pay the mortgage, right? And I, I'd be building up the equity in the house in Florida. I can use that, that what I would be paying in taxes in Connecticut to rent or buy a house, right? Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because Florida is very favorable for that. There's something called the homestead exemption. And basically it runs two ways. You get a break on taxes, on property taxes. And you also get a break on, you know, quote unquote, uh, you know, liability issues. Your home uh, is, quote unquote, outside of very limited circumstances. They can't take it from you. Mm. But yet Florida looks at it and says, look, if you will claim homestead, you are ours and you don't belong to, you know, New York or Connecticut or somebody like that. You know, you are, you know, a Florida resident. Now, her husband is saying, I am a Florida resident. Now, if it, I, I was like, okay, I see the strategy. Um, they're taking Indra's assets and they're pushing them over to her husband. You know why? Because there's no gift tax between spouses. Okay. But yet she's going to tell the rest of us how to live. The poor guy with the pizza shop around right. the corner from your studio, he's being told to live, uh, how to live by, quote unquote, this general who is in this with us together. I wanted to throw a couple of other things at you real quick. And sure. again, what you brought up is, is fascinating and, and not uh, not unexpected. You because it's a, card, but anyway. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, are you surprised how partisan this split is as far as go back to work, not go back to work? Uh, you know, put it this way, not really, because the and, – and you know where I come down. You know, I try very, very hard to come down on the green and not the red and the blue, but um, – the. Any illness is real. This is a real illness. But there is an entitlement mentality among many where they think that, you know, well, you know, we should be protected from all manner of harm. And, you know, Mama never promised you a rose garden. And yet, you know, it, it doesn't really surprise me because when you get into the mechanics of, of Boston Consulting and how they actually advise people, and they really believe, you know, these little bean brains in the Ivy League believe that you can manufacture government wealth and, and bring it through to government industries and everyone's going to do well. You know, anybody who's ever run a business or worked for a living, it doesn't work that way at all. How close are we coming to this economic collapse? I mean, we've got to be on the edge of this thing with businesses, I would think, small businesses in particular, right? <laughs> Kiplinger Magazine, or, or Kiplinger Newsletter, which I read when it comes out every two weeks, which is a very, very, very good, uh, you know, very brief summary, is saying we're talking, if we're, if we're fortunate, 16% unemployment by December. Um, I think, you know, the longer it goes on, um, I, I think maybe we're, we're maybe five to six weeks away from Armageddon because of the fact that no one here has really seen the big picture, um, because uh, there's, there's profitability in many things. The prevailing mindset is we can keep the money flowing from Washington and we'll be fine. It's not, it's, it's not uh, you know, uh, sh shall we say forever and ever. Well, let me ask, add one more thing to that before I got to go, because I was talking to a very smart guy, and, um, and there is a uh, perception, and I disagree with his his take on it. He says, listen, we have plenty of money. We have, you know, we have enough money. We just got to make sure we get the, you know, people through this time and make sure that they're safe. And I, I said, I don't think there's a money tree that uh, is growing behind the White House. We don't have an infinite amount of money, right? We, there's going to come a certain point in time when just the, the debt to service that we have to pay is, is going to, you know, basically cripple us, isn't it? Uh, I'll, I'll give you three words. Uh, Post-war Germany, those are the first two, and Venezuela. I mean, you can't run a printing press. You know, you've got to have actual 
production. You, you, you can't paper over horrible things. Okay. Listen, buddy, I appreciate it as always. My honor, my pleasure. Keep Have up, a great day. Keep up the great work. Tony D, check him out. Good stuff with him as always. And uh, we enjoy our conversations on Tuesday morning with Tony. We'll do it again next week. All right. Let's-